What up guys, Miguel here of Yuga Tech, and this is the Realme 10 Pro Plus, Realme's flagship entry for this year, 2023. Let's check it out. Going into design, in front, the Realme 10 Pro Plus features a very nice and proper curved edge AMOLED panel with a punch hole selfie camera found at the upper center edge of the display. Above that is a very sleek and slim earpiece grille hidden in the bezel. On the top of the device, you can find one out of two stereo speakers as well as a microphone for loudspeaker calls to its right. Found on the right side is the volume rocker and power button. At the bottom, we can find a dual SIM card tray, a mic for calls, a USB Type-C port, and two out of two stereo speakers. At the rear, the Realme 10 Pro Plus sports a polycarbonate back panel with a triple camera setup, hard to miss on the top left. And the dual LED flash can be found right next to it. You also get minimal Realme branding at the bottom left, symmetrically centered to the camera modules. Our unit is in this dark matter black colorway and it does a good job at making the device look shiny, but the back panel surface does feel matte. For other color options, there's Nebula Blue and Hyperspace available as well. At first grip, the frame of the device felt like it was made out of aluminum, but this little scuff I acquired on the left side makes me feel like it's plastic. I'm actually not sure, but if you're going to be covering your 10 Pro Plus with a case anyways, does it really matter? For ergonomics, I'm really not a fan of the volume rocker on the right side. My finger also tends to bump into the bottom camera module whenever I reach the increased volume. If you hold your phone with your right hand, your results may vary. And clearly, this is a tall phone. I feel like they could have bumped the volume rocker and power button just a few millimeters lower. I think that would benefit both left and right-handed users if you ask me. I do like the thinness of the phone paired up with the flat top and bottom sides. And if you're really pushing it, you could actually stand this phone up by itself without a tripod like so. But overall, the design for me is very reminiscent of a lot of phones nowadays. I mean, how can you reinvent a rectangle in your pocket without folding it, right? But off the top of my head, it kind of looks like a tall Galaxy S9 Plus that got rid of the forehead and chin bezels with a new rear. And I think it's neat. Moving on to display. The Realme 10 Pro Plus 5G features a 6.7 inch 120Hz AMOLED panel that supports HDR10 Plus and can reach a peak brightness of 800 nits. We don't get any Corning Gorilla Glass certification on board, but Realme does claim to incorporate 0.65mm of double reinforced glass capable of surviving 1.5m drops. I ran into no problems viewing this display outdoors or indoors. Although, if you spend most of your 4 p.m. afternoons out in direct sunlight, your results may vary. When it comes to media consumption, it's really hard not to enjoy this display. If you've been a fan of AMOLED panels, you already know what to expect. Deep blacks and great vibrancy right out of the box. And with a wide color gamut, you can definitely expect a very enjoyable viewing experience here. Because of my preference for accurate colors when watching media, when it comes to AMOLED panels nowadays, I tend to switch from the vibrant display profile to a neutral one, or in this 10 Pro Plus 5G's case, even the cinematic display profile which claims to cover 100% of DCI-P3 color space. I find that vibrant display profiles tend to be a lot cooler and really saturate skin tones when watching videos, which could seem less flattering. But I also get the preference for poppy colors, especially in the UI when in the vibrant profile. For speakers, we get a stereo setup on here which translates to you getting a left and right channel when listening to music or streaming your favorite shows and movies. No 3.5mm audio jack here. Although, I'm happy to report that the stereo speakers on this Realme 10 Pro Plus are actually very good in terms of loudness. When maxing out the volume to 100, there's little to no distortion. We get strong highs and mids with lows less present. I think it's worth mentioning that we also get an ultra max volume mode when you increase the volume past 100. You can expect a lot of distortion here with the highs pretty much clipped but this also makes it perfect for when you find yourself just wanting to listen to what is said, maybe a podcast, when in a very sound-polluted location. 
For hardware, globally, the Realme 10 Pro Plus is equipped with a MediaTek Dimensity 1080 chipset and a Mali G68 MC4 GPU. It is worth mentioning that our review unit features a Dimensity 920 chipset instead, and we can confirm that this will be the chipset included in the Philippine units. This is most likely due to a chip shortage with the Dimensity 1080. For configurations in our shores, the Realme 10 Pro Plus will come in either 8 or 12 gigs of RAM with 128 or 256 gigs of internal storage. It also features virtual RAM expansion from 4 gigs to 8 gigs. Going into software, you get Android 13 out of the box with Realme UI 4.0 skinned on top. Realme UI has pretty much evolved over the years and I like it. In my opinion, there is room for improvement here like additional multitasking features and better optimization for pop-up windows. What I do like are the interface customization features from typefaces to display picture profiles. I believe Realme UI 4 has all the foundational properties down in this iteration, but stuff like double pressing the lock button to shortcut to the camera app are definitely features I miss from other interfaces. But yeah, overall, no major hiccups here. When it came to day-to-day -day tasks, productivity work, and gaming, the generation-old chipset was not an issue for me. It handled all apps I threw at it with no problem. This could be a concern for our synthetic benchmark results. If you're interested in that, I'll have them flash on screen now. For battery, the Realme 10 Pro Plus gets a big 5,000 mAh battery capable of 67 watt SuperVOOC ultra fast charging. In the PC Mark Work 3.0 battery life test, we got 11 hours and 30 minutes. In our proprietary video loop test, the device lasted 20 hours and 30 minutes, which is a good thing. Utilizing 67 watt SuperVOOC charging, the 10 Pro Plus from 0 to 100 took exactly an hour. This was also with optimized nighttime charging turned off. So yes, it wasn't hard to get one and a half days of use from this and paired with the included charger and a readily available outlet, it's really like you never run out of juice. When it comes to biometric security, you get optical facial recognition on here. It's quite quick, but your results may vary in low lighting conditions. Alternatively, there is an optical in-display fingerprint sensor available as well, and I would personally use that for security instead, as it's just as quick and more secure anyways. For cameras, the Realme 10 Pro Plus gets a triple camera setup at the rear that consists of a 108MP main shooter, an 8MP ultrawide, and a 2MP macro. In front, we get a 16MP selfie camera, and the results are pretty good. Overall, the 10 Plus Pro takes very good photos, especially at its price point. Overall, the 10 Pro Plus takes very good photos, especially at this price point. Images come out sharp and clear whether in the day or night. Colors look poppy, vibrant, and a lot more accurate than I was expecting. For video, the Realme 10 Pro Plus allows users to shoot up to 4K at 30 frames per second and Full HD at 30, 60, 120, and 240 frames per second. Overall, the video that comes out of this device, whether front or back, does not disappoint. Check out our sample videos. This is a selfie video sample, shot outdoors. Hope it looks good. Hope the mic's good. Let me know. Here is a video sample, a selfie video sample now with the rear cameras. I'm now entering the Egotech hey, HQ, and here's Luis! Alright, so to conclude this review, we definitely need to talk about price. The Realme Pro Plus 5G will come in two configurations here in the Philippines. That's the 8 gigs of RAM plus 128 gigs of internal storage at 19,999 pesos, and the 12 gigs of RAM with 256 gigs of internal storage at 24,999 pesos. And if you ask me, this is a lot of phone for 20 to 25,000 pesos. You get a beautiful color accurate 6.7 inch AMOLED display with a 120 hertz refresh rate for fluid animations, pretty amazing speakers at this budget, a good set of cameras for even low light shooting, and have I not stressed how affordable this is? Now, that chipset downgrade may discourage some power users interested in this device locally, 
and may even take away its flagship level status. But when it comes to real world use, that really didn't matter to me. So, what do you guys think of the Realme 10 Pro Plus? Is it affordable? Is it worth the money? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to smack that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit that bell icon so you get notified of future uploads. Be sure to visit yugatech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. Again, this has been Miguel, and I'll see you in the next one.